Hello, my fellow Minecrafters. I'm Carl Fire, and behind me are two, kind of four, designs for a potion brewing machine, which I've come up with here. I'm really happy with these designs because not only do they look really good, they also uh, are capable of brewing any potion in the game, or at least these two are, the two ones on the ends here with these magenta circuits are, without wasting any of your uh, nether wart on potions of weakness which uh, every other design that I have seen uh, outside of some really massive, mega, really awesome ones um, do, actually. Um, they require you to use both of these ingredients to brew one potion of weakness when you only need a fermented spider eye. It's also capable of brewing six ingredient potions, uh, so that is lingering potions that have been that have a negative effect and are using uh, redstone to increase the time that they're active for, which if you're using lingering potions, they don't last very long, so you probably do want to be doing that. Uh, it's capable of handling that absolutely no problem at all. Easy peasy. So uh, let me just walk you through the system here, and then we'll brew up some potions. So up here we have our droppers. They have all of our ingredients, our, our fermented spider eyes, everything. Uh, down here we have our blaze powder, and you can just switch these two here and put a hopper going through here. If you have enough blaze powder to back this system up, uh, it will uh, work that way that you can uh, basically just drop from the top of this line. However, uh, I don't really think that's necessary, so I haven't done that in this case. You can also uh, put these in any order that you like, except for these two over here. The nether wart and the fermented spider eyes have to be in those positions. Non-negotiable. Uh, down here we have water bottles. This version here has a full double chest worth, as well as two hoppers. That's 64. A full stack of, of, of bottles can go into here once you've filled them up with water. Uh, we have an indicator lamp for our nether wart. If we remove our nether wart from here, let me just do that real quick. You can see that that light has turned off. Let's put it back in because we're going to want to use it. And this one here is for our water bottles. In this version, it is actually reading from our chest there and saying, look, uh, you have just run out of water bottles. So you'll have a few, uh, you'll have 10 water bottles after this light goes off. Um, which is enough to do three different potions plus one. Um, so yeah, you'll have a little bit of time, but you still want to be going ahead and refilling that when that light turns off. Over here, we have our modifying ingredients. Uh, this is how we select what we want to do. Uh, if we want to do an ill effect, we use uh, our fermented spider eyes. If we want to make it last longer, we use our redstone, etc. And the actual ingredients are down here in these four droppers. Uh, this one is actually going to pull from this dropper over here, so you don't need to split your fermented spider eyes up. Uh, it's going to send a, a signal over there to actually just send one from there. This lamp will turn on when we're brewing so that we know that our system is active. And this is our useless lever. You pull this if you want to brew a potion that does not require nether wart and also <laughs> isn't a weakness potion. So if I pull this lever, uh, I will now be able to brew splash water bottles, which are really the only reason you would ever use this, because mundane potions and thick potions are, are incredibly useless things. Uh, however, splash water bottles do let you uh, put out fires in the nether and fight blaze. So yeah, they could be worth it in some in some scenarios, which is why it's included. This button here does the exact same thing as that, only it just goes ahead and brews uh, one of those items as well. Okay, so now that I've explained how everything is laid out, uh, we have two options for actually brewing our potions. We can go ahead and just hit the buttons here that correspond to our ingredients. If I hit this one, we'll get a regeneration potion. If I hit this one, we'll get a turtle master potion. Or we can go into here and pick a potion from our book. And I've just written out all the potions here um, uh, with the various things in here uh, and just some information about them I was writing down. Uh, you can make this as complicated as you want, or you can just have a book that says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 15. It needs to have 15 pages. That's really important. So the last couple ones here, actually, after our ingredients, Night Vision is the last one in this one. It's actually, these two are just going to brew awkward potions, um, which you can also be, this is what you would select if you wanted to use uh, the button for the useless potions, you would put it on the one of the awkward potion pages. And then page 15, do not use page 15. Page 15 will break the system, and you will have to follow the instructions to fix it. But if you do uh, use page 15, just change the page, 
There'll be a piece of nether wart in here, pull it out, and then just brew another potion using this button, and everything will be fine. Um, absolutely fine. And I think I just saw that light flash because I might have just made it mad by going to page 15. Don't go to page 15. Don't know how to be more clear about not going to page 15. Uh, did I make it mad? I don't think I made it mad. Uh, <laughs> page 15 is there to make the system work. It is not there to be read. There are secrets on it, and you don't want to know them. Okay, so uh, we're all ready to go here. I'm going to use uh, the lectern here, and I could just press any of these buttons here. We're going to brew up a six-tier potion, so we're going to do invisibility just because uh, it's uh, useful here, and just to see how this system works uh, and, and basically... Uh, how it functions. So let's hit this button. Ding! <laughs> uh, water bottles are filling up in here, and our nether ward is already in the system, primed, ready to go. Golden carrot, fermented spider eye. Oh, there we go, lovely. Now these two don't, do, doesn't matter what order it comes in, but it does matter that we are not seeing any dragon's breath, which is a good thing, because there's six uh, ingredients and five slots, so if that uh, Dragon's Breath was there, it would have taken the place of the Nether Wart and would try and brew next and just jam everything up. The problem with it is it absolutely has to go after the gunpowder or it will not work. So what we have actually done is instead of putting it into this water stream, we've just moved it over to this dropper. This dropper is facing into this one. It's in there. And when our last ingredient comes through, which in this case is a piece of redstone, once it comes out of this hopper, it'll send a signal and send that one all the way up through the system and actually just put it right in here. Uh, so it will always come dead last, and it will not clog up anything in here. Oh, that's right. We were uh, making it mad with potion fif with uh, yeah 15 there, weren't we? Let me just reset this, and it will should start working again. Okay, we're going to try this again. Hit the button. Ding! And yeah, here we go. Water bottles are filling up here. Nether wart. Okay, this should work now. Uh, so now we're just going to wait and watch that system and just make sure that everything is good. Okay, so this is the last item in our hopper, this redstone dust here. As soon as it leaves right now, uh, our dragon's breath is having a signal sent to it right now to come and enter this hopper. So it does take a little bit. It takes about 15 seconds. There we go. Dragon's breath. Uh, yeah, you can see here we're about halfway through brewing this. And so it will come in and, and basically just give us a... A lingering potion there. We've got some potions from testing this out before, so those three will end up right in there when they are done. Nice and good. We can see here our lamp is on because we are using the brewing machine, and as soon as it goes ding, that light will turn off. Uh, let's just get nice and close here. We're almost there. Okay, we're going to wait for the it to go ding and see that happen. There we go. Our uh, potions have brewed. We now have lingering potions of invisibility. This one here is exactly the same thing, only the buttons are down here. Because the buttons are down here, uh, it does mean that we need to use a barrel rather than a double chest, uh, which does cut down on how much uh, water we can actually store in the system, unfortunately. That is one drawback to this system. Uh, the other thing is there's no lever, it's just a button down here rather than way up there uh, for brewing useless potions. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. We are reading uh, a signal strength from the uh, nether wart and also from the water bottles here and here. There is no indicator lamp uh, just because it, the redstone for it didn't really fit well and there wasn't a great spot for it. So this one I'm actually just going to show you the useless uh, feature. We're going to build, we're just going to make some uh, water splash bottles here. Uh, so let's hit this button. You can see here we have selected gunpowder, which is going to brew a splash potion. You just saw maybe out of the corner of your eye, uh, that little piece of gunpowder going around there. Gunpowder's landed in the system, and it is now brewing us some lovely, lovely blaze killers. Uh, this one here, there is a slab here because there's redstone on either side of this, so that is uh, one difference here, but you're still able to have access uh, to that hopper as, as well. Uh, so, you guys, I'm really excited about this. Uh, please check it out if you want. Uh, if you want to stick around, I'm going to explain the redstone and tell you exactly what is going on. So there we have our splash potions there in the barrel, so that you guys can understand what's going on, uh, why it does what it does, how it works. Uh, it's not quite as complicated as it actually looks. Um, all of these are basically just the same machine, although those two are basically two machines wrapped around each other.
So I'm going to start by just showing you the really simple version, tell you what's going on, and, and then if you're interested, I will explain about the, the slightly more complicated version as well. So this works by powering the droppers directly. If we select an ingredient uh, like this, you can see we have our pufferfish go up and enter the system just like that. Um, and then because we had the splash potion still uh, affected, one of these droppers fired, send it out here. Like I said, uh, this dropper here is for uh, those lingering potions for our dragon's breath here. So on this side, uh, we're actually just reading the backside of those buttons. That's They're on the other side of those gold blocks. They go onto this uh, glass row here and send a, a signal down to this block here. And it actually just sends that signal down along this uh, green wool here. And it's gonna send it into this pink circuit. This pink circuit just checks which levers we have uh, pulled and then it powers the droppers. It's pretty simple. Um, Obviously, this dropper is going into that dropper instead of the, the water stream, but it works exactly the same way. Uh, then it also checks whether we want fermented spider eyes, which is this red circuit. Uh, and then it basically goes on a bit of a delay because we don't want it to go too quickly um, because these are over here and the fermented spider eyes are actually over here. So if I selected a healing potion and then I fermented it to make a harming potion, I would actually get a, a weakness potion and a bit of glistering melons clogging up my system. So we needed a delay. It comes through this red circuit up here, and it actually, if I can kind of show you where that goes, it goes into this uh, block here, on the other side of which is that dropper that holds our fermented spider eyes. So it just delays and goes up there, does that. Uh, it also sends a signal from the main button press here up this gray circuit and it needs to be so far over so that the signal strength from these two buttons can't actually reach because we don't want to put our nether ward in with our weakness potion and we don't want to put it in if we're brewing an awkward potion for whatever reason we really don't want two pieces of nether ward going through so it comes up here along here and then goes into this block here by the way, if this is out of nether wart, it will flash this light reminding us, hey, guess what? This failed. We don't have any nether wart. This version uh, does it. The other versions don't. I think it's pretty cool uh, it, that it does that. I, I, I consider that a feature, not a bug, <laughs> which is what you say about anything you don't know how to fix. <laughs> so uh, it send, So we pressed our button, and it's sent off, and it's collected our ingredients. It now will also send, uh, it rings this bell, and then it goes into this purple circuit. This purple circuit is kind of messy, but it basically just does three things. The first thing it does is it extends the pulse, and then it powers this hopper. Uh, so it'll hold the items in here, giving them enough time to accumulate, and that is so that this clock here uh, doesn't get messed up. Once our items are in here, uh, this will basically uh, decay, this, it will turn off and unpower it. It also uh, unpowers this hopper with the water bottles that will uh, allow us to uh, fill this up with water bottles. So that's what the purple circuit does. As soon as there's an item in here, it's going to turn this clock on and these will all light up and take 30 seconds to turn off. Uh, they do that because that's how long it how much time it takes for the potion that has just left this, or the ingredient that has just left this hopper to brew up. Uh, once this starts to go down, uh, as soon as this piece of redstone here drops from signal strength 15 to 14, this is a book on 14 comparing it, by the way. You can use anything, but because I was using lecterns and books, uh, this is going to put out, anything that puts out signal strength 14 is going to be your friend. So we'll just send a pulse down here through a falling edge circuit into this dropper here. Uh, that way, it's if there is something in this dropper, uh, any of this dragon's breath, it will fire it out. If there isn't, then we're all good. Um, of course, that dragon's breath will come up here and kind of reset this clock when it passes through this hopper, uh, just because it's going to land about halfway through the brewing here, uh, and so it'll reset it. Of course, that means that this brown circuit will fire again, but there won't be anything in the dropper, so it will basically end the run there. Uh, once it d decays completely, this falling edge detector will turn on and go down here, uh, get extended a little bit again, and then basically all it does is it turns this torch off, and that torch will allow, uh, once it turns off, 
the potions that have brewed up to drain away into our hopper, or into our barrel. Sorry, uh, that's not a hopper. It also reads this hopper here, so if anything passes through, it's going to ring this bell, letting us know, hey, guess what? Everything is done. These uh, dark gray ones here are basically just reading uh, the water and the nether wart and powering these two lamps. This magenta circuit here is for the useless buttons. Uh, you can have the useless buttons here or here. Obviously, you'd remove the part of the useless circuit uh, underneath it if you uh, uh, didn't want, if you wanted to have the button here rather than over there. It just comes up here and it pushes a block over here. Basically, that means when it comes to tell the system, hey, guess what? You need to put some nether wart into the system. Uh, this redstone line can't get through. And it's just extended a little bit here. It also puts a pulse into this line because we still need to, to turn the timings on for the brewing to take effect. And also, we need to check for any of our modifying ingredients. Uh, so that is all of the circuits for this one. Uh, that's the basic idea of, of how this system works. Uh, I'm now going to show you what is different uh, for these ones here. Um, <laughs> they're, it's just a little bit bigger because it's essentially two different machines, right? There's a machine that works if you press these, and there's a machine that works if you use the lectern. Uh, but it's using the same circuitry. So let's just kind of go over what we did over there. Let's assume that you press one of these buttons here. It's going to turn off these torches here, turning these ones on. This line is going to come all the way down here down this uh, green circuit here, ring the bell. This green circuit is basically the same as a dark green one that we were looking at before. It comes down here and powers our pink circuit, uh, which is exactly the same as the other one. Uh, it's also going to come down here and power our clock. And it's gonna come down here and go up this gray bit here this is for our nether wart. This blue circuit is what uh, allows us to not send nether wart through when we press these two buttons. It's a bit bulky, a bit annoying, but we don't have the same luxury of uh, just using signal strength uh, that we did for the other one. So uh, unfortunately, uh, this is going to have to to work this way and just bulk up the system uh, a little bit more. Uh, so basically, it powers this line here, sends its own uh, independent source down this way to and go and, and start uh, checking for modified ingredients. And then it basically just skips over the part of the circuitry here that's sending a pulse down for uh, nether wart and just goes straight to powering the clock. That way, no nether wart enters the system. Um, so that is how the buttons work. It's, it's more or less exactly the same. Uh, principle. It's powering the same things. It's just a little bit more complicated in order to get it to do uh, exactly what we want. Uh, so then the other system here is uh, reading the signal strength of this lectern, and then uh, once this button is pressed, powering these from behind. Uh, so this gold circuit here that we are underneath of, it basically winds up here and it's just taking this one little bit of dust and sending it up here. So whatever signal strength that book is on is going to come out onto this line here. That's all it does. This uh, comparator here is being turned off by this redstone which is on a torch and that is connected to the button. So when you press this button it turns it off and it lets the signal through uh, blinking this light on. This dark green circuit here is a signal strength reader. So if we're on page one, this is why the book needs to have 15 pages, uh, because each page will be one level of redstone. So if page one, it will send a line through here, powering this green block on the other side of this green block are the droppers, page two, page three, page four, page five, etc. Uh, so it does just require a lot more repeaters to do what, and all this basically, uh, what one button <laughs> basically just turns these buttons into one button and a lectern. Uh, yeah, so that will be sent out. Uh, the other thing that it does is it reads it reads from over here. Uh, the repeater uh, that's going into the block above here is going to power this gray line. This gray line is just going to go in here and power our nether wart. Uh, this one here is the 
line that is selecting whether we're brewing uh, weakness potions. So it basically just won't fire uh, the nether wart if this one's is turned on. Any other one, it, it will, which is exactly what we need it to be doing. Uh, the red circuit is pretty much exactly the same, only it's just hijacking some of the, the redstone here. Uh, it's basically pretending like uh, like, a, like it's a button telling it to brew a weakness potion and uh, basically just powering the, the fermented spider eyedropper, which is the one right there. Um, but basically, same same idea with, with, the, with the red circuit here. The button uh, also goes into the purple circuit. Uh, the purple circuit is slightly bigger in uh, the two designs that have uh, this uh, magenta useless feature. It's uh, slightly bigger. Um, you can take a look at the world download, but basically it's just one comparator bigger, and that is just uh, to deal with uh, fixing some of the timing issues. So that also means that these are uh, ever so slightly slower as, as well. They have more features, but they're also slower. So it goes into the purple circuit. The purple circuit is exactly the same as, as the other one, just laid out differently. Uh, same thing with the cyan circuit, laid out differently, does exactly the same thing, just makes a bend where the other one doesn't. Um, uh, brown circuit, same thing again, exactly the same as before. There is one circuit in here, uh, this orange circuit, which the other one doesn't have. Uh, you can see here all of these uh, repeaters going down here. Now you cannot use dust, dust will mess up this clock. So you have to use repeaters. Um, the first three of them are on full delay. The rest are just uh, regular repeaters going into the lamp to tell us uh, that we are um, in business. And this delay just times it perfectly so that when it goes ding, uh, it turns off. Uh, uh, on these ones, the other thing is uh, that the useless feature is both a button, which is this one here, um, and also a lever. Uh, you need to use the lever if you're using the book. The button works on its own. Um, this pulls uh, this block out as well as this block out. Uh, you need to basically turn off the, the nether wart uh, line twice, uh, just the way that it, that it works out um, on there. That, that's a little bit different in this version as well. So that's just about it, folks. That's the explanation for how these work, uh, what's going on behind the scenes. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, it's definitely overkill to brew your potions, but it is a, a pretty cool way to do it. Uh, these sort of machines have been around for a long time, and I just thought I'd take my little spin on it to make it uh, slightly more resource uh, efficient when it comes to the actual ingredients, maybe not when it comes to the redstone, uh, and try and just do some cool things um, that using uh, the new 1.15 blocks, which I'm trying to use more of in my redstone here. Uh, once again, I highly, highly recommend you build this last one here, uh, simply because the other one, uh, as cool as it is, um, uses a lot of redstone. And so if in a survival situation, this one here is probably uh, your best uh, bang for your buck in terms of this type of system here. Um, it's just really, really cool to be able to brew any type of potion in the game uh, just with the, with the flick of a, a, a button here, um, or many buttons on this one here, uh, and not have to go around and fiddle around with a lot of things. Um, especially just having this dedicated uh, weakness button here uh, is totally uh, game-changing for the way that I automate my brewing uh, system here. Um, I've had other ones in, in the past, and this one here, uh, this, this version, shall I say, is uh, by, far, by far my favorite from a user uh, standpoint. I built this on my survival world. I built that version on my survival world, and uh, I've been really, really enjoying it uh, ever since I built it up. Um, it's just a lot of fun to use. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys have any uh, suggestions for how this can be improved, please let me know. If I decide to make any changes to this design, I will go ahead and update uh, the world download. Uh, so that uh, you guys can just go log on there. Obviously, I can't change the video, but I can change uh, the download, and I will uh, put you know signs up and describe uh, what it is that I've changed and that kind of stuff. Uh, and I will see you guys the next time I make something else uh, equally cool and crazy. Uh, that's all for now. See you later, folks. Bye.